step into a world of cultural significance and artistic brilliance as we dive into the life of Edith Kanaka Ole, from the beautiful design on the quarter she's now on to the deep symbolism it holds. Get ready for a celebration of heritage and the power of representation. Get ready to be transported to a world of cultural richness and inspiration as we dive into the extraordinary life of Edith Kanaka Ole. We'll unravel the captivating story behind the face on the quarter and discover the remarkable legacy she left behind. All right, we're excited to be celebrating AAPI Heritage Month, and we're doing so in a special way. We have Edith Kaneka Oleg, who is on the U.S. quarter, and here to tell us more about that is celebrity historian. We have Rafi Andonian with more. Hey. <laughs> yeah, how are you? We're doing great. We're doing good. This is an exciting thing to talk about. So can you introduce us into who Edith is for those who don't know? Edith Kanakaole was known as Auntie Edith because of the traditional preservation that she did. She was a composer, she was a, a chanter, also sang, she was a dancer, a hula dancer. She did a lot of work to preserve cultural heritage in, uh, in her you know, native land, as a native Hawaiian. Uh, she was, for example, I'll give you an example. So for when she would do the hula dancing, when she learned from her mother, she thought that was a way to help perpetuate the culture. Mm -hmm. When she did the chant, she thought that helped establish Hawaiian uh, roots, heritage, and uh, uh, traditions and the values of Hawaiian culture. And think about it this way, like if we think about it in English speaking, we kind of do a little bit of that too. You think about your alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? Singing is a way we establish the foundations of language. She established school programs. She established her own school for dancing and a, a, a program to help learn language in public schools, wow. Hawaiian language in public schools. And then of course, eventually even created a college course. So that's the kind of impact and level that she had in her native Hawaii. Oh my gosh, she's done so much. And so what led to this special honor being bestowed upon Edith? What you have right now going on is the U.S. Mint that produces our money mm -hmm. is creating a series of quarters over the course of four years, 20 of them, honoring five women a year. And she's featured right now, now we're in the second year of the program, seventh total, seventh quarter overall in the series. And so in that court program, known as the American Women Quarters Program, this is the first time that we have circulating quarters, so it might be in your pocket, ah. circulating quarters that are ex dedicated exclusively to women. Yeah. And so she is one of those 20 that is being honored. Oh my gosh, first of all, I love that we're honoring women on the quarter. I love that Edith is getting her recognition. And I understand that there is a uh, something inscripted on Edith's quarter specifically. Can you tell us about that? It means granting wisdom or granting the wisdom is what the inscription means on there because yeah. of the work that she did for culture and preservation and preserving that wisdom. And what's also important to point out mm -hmm. oh, next to the inscription is her hair, if you look at the image closely, mm -hmm. is blending into the Hawaiian landscape because mm -hmm. part of her work was actually helping protect the Hawaiian landscape, which there was a struggle for with the federal government because many of those lands that they try to control for the government yeah. were spiritually and traditionally important to Native Hawaiians. Oh, wow. Why do you think it's important that we have this representation on the quarter? One, we got women on the quarter that we're putting on, but specifically Edith, and we're celebrating AAPI Heritage Month. Well, for one, money is where nations honor their heroes. And now you have Auntie Edith on there on the same platform as George Washington. So I think that's what makes it so important. Mm -hmm. And specifically now talking about it with the AAPI, as you point out, mm -hmm. because what it does is shows that it's not just about lineage. It's yeah. about protecting culture. Because in this situation, for example, when Hawaii became a state not too long ago, we're talking about 60 some odd years ago, yeah. there was a lot of pressure to assimilate. So one thing you had, I already mentioned the land, for example, but language also. So for example, in, in there was uh, the state banned speaking Hawaiian mm -hmm. in schools. So that started to you know, have a decline in the language. Language is a root and basis of culture. So that's why her work on language is so important. So it's important to remember in this month particularly, yeah. the effort that it takes to preserve and maintain these cultures is not just about lineage, but it takes work to be done by people such as Auntie Edith. Yes, I love it, Auntie Edith. How else is Auntie Edith being recognized in honor of AAPI Heritage Month? Well, she's gotten the top award designation from the state of Hawaii for mm -hmm. preserving culture. It's a lifetime achievement type award. She also has a foundation that is named in her honor that helps uh, perpetuate uh, her teachings and preserve ho Native Hawaiian culture. Wow. And finally, she's on the, Ameri uh, the uh, National American Women's uh, Museum uh, 
History Museum, which is really important because there's four million visitors that they get a year online for the National Women's History Museum. All right, I'm gonna let our viewers know where they can go for more info. Always a pleasure. To learn more about the coin, go to usmint.gov.